Watch this. Python people, this is Prof G. Want to sling fat beats, deadly drops, mellifluous melodies? Well, now you can using Circuit Python and Capacitive Touch to easily create your own DJ board. Watch this. Now this project was inspired by the fantastic Todd Kurt, who's online as Toddbot. If you're not following him on Twitter, definitely look him up online right away and follow his posts. Among other things, he curates a super useful list of CircuitPython tips and hacks that I recommend to all of my students. You can find this at the URL I'm showing here. It's also linked in the description of this video. Now Todd's demo that kicked off my interest in this project was the one knob DJ he showed on Twitter. All right, here's how to be a DJ with one knob. And I thought this was fantastic. Now I'd never worked with Audio Mixer before, but when I saw this, I wanted to create a DJ board that would mix multiple sounds together for simultaneous play when you touch different capacitive touch pads. Now Todd has a music background, and I don't, but the fact that I was able to get things up and running quickly is a testament to how groovy CircuitPython is. Now in this build, I'll be using the 12-pad Adafruit MPR-121 Gator Breakout, Make sure you're ordering the Gator version. There's another sensor with the same name that doesn't have these nice alligator clip friendly pads, but the Gator version does. It's a super easy to use 12 pad capacitive touch sensor that we covered in an earlier CircuitPython school lecture. If you missed that, feel free to go back and check that out. It's in our playlist, which you see here, also linked in the description. And if you just want to use the capacitive touch pads on your Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, you should be able to sub in code for that, which we covered in an earlier Circuit Playground capacitive touch lesson. Now I've got the code that's used in this project in the GitHub repo at this URL, also linked in the description, and you can download the Beats folder with the sounds used in this project from the CircuitPython School Google Drive at this URL. Now the code that I posted on GitHub was written for an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, but the code has comments to guide you through the simple changes that you can make if you want to run this code on a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, a Cutie Pie RP2040, or pretty much any other CircuitPython board that supports some form of audio out and that you can attach a Stemma QT port to. Now before we bust some code, let's first take a look at how we wire things up on the three boards I just mentioned. Now the easiest is the Cutie Pie RP2040 since it's already got a Stemma QT port built in. Now you will need this simple cable to plug it right into the MPR121 and you can also hook up any self-powered speaker that has an RCA jack. I used an inexpensive hamburger speaker like this one. Just clip the tip of the RCA jack that you're using to the audio output. I used A0 on the Cutie Pie. I used D3 for the Arduino Nano RP2040 and clip the base or sleeve of the RCA jack, wiring that to a ground pin. And if you use an Arduino Nano RP2040 or another board without a Stemma QT port, you can add one with this cable, just attach the black to ground, red to 3.3 volt, blue to your SDA pin, that's A4 on this Arduino, but it might be something different on different boards, and yellow goes to the SCL pin, that's A5 on this Arduino. Now setup for the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit is pretty similar. You can get a Stemma QT cable with four alligator clips like this one here, black to ground, red to 3.3 volt, blue or SDA to A5 on the CPB, and yellow or SCL to A4 on the CPB, so those two pins are flipped from where they are on the Arduino on the earlier page. And for the audio jack, the base sleeve goes to ground, and the tip goes to the audio pad on the CPB. Now let me walk you through the code before we copy it and paste it and run it on our device. So to set things up, you're going to need to import time, board, digital IO, audio core, audio mixer, Adafruit underscore MPR121. And if you're using a Cutie Pie RP2040, you're going to need to import bus IO too. Then this block of code will set up audio out. And it should work regardless of whether your board supports the audio out module or the PWM audio out module. Some boards only support one of those two options, but this code will work in either case. 
And then we set up an object to control the NPR121 touchpads by creating an I2C object. This is familiar if you went through the earlier video lessons where we used other I2C sensors. Just remember, if you're using the Cutie Pie RP2040, you need to swap out this line for this one here that uses bus IO and passes in between the parentheses board.sda1 and board.scl1. The Cutie Pie board is a little bit different and it needs a different I2C setup. Then we just pass the I2C object we set up to create an NPR121. 121 object from the Adafruit underscore MPR 121 module that we imported above, and we're going to call that object touch underscore pad. This next bit sets up speaker output, so if you have the Arduino, use this line here. Now remember, I have the tip of my RCA jack connected to D3 for that board, and if you use the Cutie Pie board with the wiring I showed on the previous slide, then change D3 to A0. Now if you're using the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, comment out this line and uncomment these four lines that are in the code. This is the same code that we used in earlier lectures that let us work with the speaker functions of the CPB, and it'll also work with any external speakers that we've clipped to it. Next, this is where we read in all of our WAV files in advance so that we can start playing them right away when the pad is touched. Now these names need to match the exact names. Notice that there's a WAV at the end, and there's a file with each of these names on our board inside of a folder called Beats and that folder has to be spelled lowercase b-e-a-t-s. Now, if you run out of space when copying stuff over, then delete any older sound folders that you might have. You won't need them for this build. That should free up enough space so that you can save the entire Beats folder with all 12 WAV files inside. Now, you can also use your own files. If you do, just be sure that you change your name here in your code so that it corresponds to the exact file name with the extension of any file that you created. Make sure you copy any of those new files over into your Beats folder too. Also make sure that any new files are saved in a format that's mono, not stereo, 22 kilohertz, and 16-bit WAV files. Now in an earlier video, I mentioned that you could use a free program called Audacity for Windows or Mac, and that'll let you convert files to this specific format. Here's where you can find the settings in that program to convert any files to this format. So you can pause on the slide and use this as a reference if you're ever converting your own files. Do know that you've got less than two megabytes of free space on a circuit playground, just under eight megabytes of free space on a Cutie Pie RP2040, and less than 16 megabytes of free space in an Arduino RP2040. But for the 12 samples I'm showing you, they are gonna fit on any of these boards. Also make sure that you copy over any new files into your Beats folder. Now this line is where we set up the audio mixer object. We're gonna play all 12 samples at once. Each sample is played in what's called a voice. Now the sample rate for the files is 22 kilohertz. So this is set properly as long as you've used the format that we mentioned before. All of our Beats files have already been saved in this format. They're 16-bit samples as you see here. So we shouldn't need to change any of these lines as long as you keep the format the same. And this next line passes the mixer into the play method for the audio object that we created that's called audio. We did that on the earlier slide. That lets us mix together multiple sounds or voices all at once. And then this loop here simply reads in all of the files from the beats list, and we play each of the files in what's called a separate voice. Now they're actually all gonna play right away, and we're gonna loop through their playing continuously, but the level attribute for each voice is set to 0.0. .0. So we're initially not gonna hear anything, but when we touch a pad that's associated with an individual track or an individual voice, then we're gonna set the level for that track or voice to one so that we can hear it play. We'll see that in just a bit. Then we'll wait just one second for the sound to play a bit with the volume off. Todd did this in his code, so I kept it in here, trusting his judgment better than my own. And then this is the main loop. One thing that's important is to make sure that you have no more beats than you have pads on your touchpad. I have exactly 12 beats because there are 12 touchpads on the MPR-121. So I have one element of beats for each touchpad. Don't add more than 12 files in the beats list because otherwise you'll get an index out of range when you run through this loop. Also remember that if you're using just the CPB pads instead of the NPR-121, then you're gonna to wanna to decrease this number so that it corresponds to the number of pads in the CPB that you're using. You'd also need to change your touchpad setup code in the way that we showed you in an earlier lesson when we work with touchpads in the CPB. Now, each time we go through the while true loop, we're gonna loop through this loop here 12 times since our beats list has 12 elements and that matches up to one sound per touchpad on the NPR-121. The touchpads are individually referenced as touch underscore pad in brackets I. And if the dot value property is true for a given pad, then that pad is being touched. And if it is being touched, then inside this if clause, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the mixer's level to one. Remember we initially sent them to zero, but then if we set it to one, then the sound that 
corresponds to that pad will be playing at full volume and we'll be able to hear it. But if the pad is not being touched, we go to this else clause here and we make sure that the voice for that track has its level set back to zero so that we don't hear that track at all. This lets us play multiple tracks if you're touching multiple pads at once and it'll play no sounds at all if no pads are being touched. And that's it. As is usual with Python projects, the setup was the toughest part. The actual code to execute this is only six magical lines. So now let's see this in action. Now here you can see that I printed out a piece of paper. It's just got an image of the sensor and I clipped alligator clips to the ends here. The other ends of these alligator clips are clipped to each of the separate pads that are on the MPR-121 sensor. You can get way fancier than this. In fact, I've encouraged my students to use capacitive touch paint and make a touch sensitive mural for an upcoming arts festival. But if you want to print out a copy of this image, it's in the Google Drive for our course, the same place where you found the beats folder. That's a bit.ly slash circuitpython school files, all lowercase. Now you can also see how I've connected the Stemma QT cable to the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, just like in the diagram. The audio jack is wired here to the CPB with the alligator clips on the RCA jack. So I'm gonna plug in my CPB, I'm gonna open Moo, then I'm gonna open GitHub at the URL I gave you earlier, and I'm gonna click on code.py, and I'm gonna highlight and copy this code and I'm gonna paste it back into Moo. And now the code here is meant to work with the Arduino Nano RP2040. So if you set things up in an RP2040, you can go ahead and save and everything should work. I've also commented out some areas where you need to make changes specific to the Cutie Pie RP2040 or the CPB. We'll make the changes for the CPB here since that's what I'm using for this demo. The only major change that you need to make is comment out this line where we create an audio out object on D3. And instead what we're gonna do is uncomment these four lines. If you went through our earlier Circuit Playground lessons, you've already used these four lines. These are the same four ones that we use to set up audio on our Circuit Playground projects. And that's it. So we can open our serial console to make sure that we have no errors. We can save this to our Circuit Pi volume as code.py. Looking good. No errors. Let's bring in a noise and bring on the funk. Watch this. So look at you, Code Monster. Code like a blizzard with Python. You are a wizard. Let the funky fresh rhymes flow right out of your gizzard. I hope you enjoyed that. Rock on. Share your freshest beats. Post a short clip to Twitter at Gallagher with the hashtag BuiltWithProfG. And you might win one of the weekly sticker giveaways. And keep making the awesome.